on today's show of the Human Podcast, your podcast for inspiring stories. I do have today even Willing on my show. Even a warm welcome. Thank you very much. I got my handy mic here. <laughs> <laughs> even, even is known as he was um, the chef from Will Smith and he was working in LA for him for about something like five years and not just that you're a musician you're a surfer he's an artist mm -hmm. and he's someone from whom you can love to enjoy food again to enjoy food to love food and to feel food again and I remember what you said a couple of days ago like to even communicate with food so, a warm welcome again. Even, you were working for Will Smith. That's correct, yeah. So, how is Will Smith? Uh, Will Smith's an awesome person. I really like him. He's, he's very, like, um, big, like, spiritually. <laughs> Not, like, he fills the house, you know, they have a big house, and, like, when Will comes home, like, you can feel him there, and, like, really positive energy, and, um, yeah, he's cool. He's creating a lot of rad stuff, as most people mm -hmm. know, that mm -hmm. like watching his movies. Mm, wow. So you were cooking for him in the morning, for lunch, and for the evening? Yeah, so it was four and a half years. Mm -hmm. So um, basically it was, it was a mix. For a while I was just doing dinners. Some days I was doing breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, I traveled with them a bit when I was traveling. It was like full on breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. <laughs> like, just going at it. Yeah. <laughs> And tell me, what is his most favorite dish? What did he ask you to do even? When he was like getting up and he was in a good mood and he wanted to have something that is really bringing him up, what, yeah. was, he, what was he asking you to do for him? Well, there's not an exact answer to that for, from my experience. Um, the main thing that I did for him was create health conscious food that's really delicious. Health conscious food? Yes, so mm -hmm. that means food that uh, is good for your health. I don't label it like a diet, like vegan or paleo or whatever other million diets. Mm -hmm. It's just health conscious is having the awareness of what works good for your body. Mm -hmm. And so I would bring foods that have like high energy, high nutrition mm -hmm. and make them taste delicious. And mm -hmm. that's what he loved. And this is what he was really like into as well. Did you bring this kind of health consciousness when it comes to food into his house? Or was he already aware of that before and he's asked you to just follow his path and support him there. Yeah, well, it's kind of a cool story. So I don't, I mean, I think he probably had a health awareness, but they actually, their family went on vacation to Kauai mm -hmm. and they had a different chef cook for them there that was health conscious. And they were like, wow, we really like this. And they called the head chef from Hawaii because they're, they're getting ready to come home. They're like, we want to eat totally healthy now. It was like this huge shift. And so the head chef was kind of freaking out like, how do I, we have all this staff that doesn't fully know how to do it. And that's how I actually got the job was because oh, wow. it was like, they needed someone and someone who knew someone knew of me and they said, hey, can you come cook for Will Smith? And I was like, okay. So it was like one day I just got a call basically. Well, lucky you. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was and Carly, you did a good job because you stayed there for four and a half years. Yeah, yeah, I had some, um, I said I was really strong in bringing like really good ingredients and cooking them in a um, beautiful, creative way that like accentuated the natural flavors of the ingredients. I wasn't so trained as the other chefs. Like I had to like study a lot and catch up, and I'd be stressed sometimes, like figuring it out how to cook for everyone and do all my duties. But uh, yeah, they loved it. When it comes to healthy foods, I'm asking myself like, what is healthy? Is it like for everybody the same? Because you mentioned before, like, it's very individualized, as far as I understood you, like, what suits me and my body the most. So, so what is healthy then? Okay, so, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are confused mm -hmm. around this. It's kind of a big area of confusion because there's so many different diets. Yeah, And it's like, tons. do I, am I vegan? Do I do paleo? <laughs> like, and they're both saying, like, this is the best diet. Yeah, your body of, people always ask you, like, uh, do you have any allergies? Or do you want to have oat milk or coconut milk? That's very, very special here on that island in addition. Yes, totally. Yeah. So um, the first thing is, like, creating self-awareness. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way that you can do that is mm -hmm. by observing how do you feel after eating something. Mm -hmm. And a simple way to get started, like, if you're wondering, okay, how do I start in that journey? Breakfast is a really good time because you don't have any food in you 
up to that point mm -hmm. and you can try by like going with like a more like sugar mm -hmm. sugary carbohydrate breakfast by mm -hmm. sugar i don't mean like white sugar mm -hmm. i mean like maybe you just eat fruit for breakfast mm -hmm. but like no fats mm -hmm. and then one day maybe you just eat like avocado so you're eating mostly fat right mm -hmm. and then one day maybe it's more protein which could be like meat or fish or nuts if you're mm -hmm. vegan and you start to see what one of those like how do those fuel your body do you get an energy where you're like super energized and you crash also you should train yourself you should have a look on yourself you should try different things yes that's what you say right yeah ah, okay totally good point so that's kind of a good base start mm -hmm. is to see like fat protein carbohydrates mm -hmm. how do you run off those different fuels and mm -hmm. start you can start understanding your own body and what works for you what kind of criteria would be good i mean i try today i eat the avocado tomorrow i go for some old stuff and the next day i will try a food cocktail how do i know whether this was no good for me and i feel healthy consciousness healthy after what are the criteria i can measure that against oh like how do you measure for yes, yourself whether this was the right breakfast for me and my body sure i think it's pretty simple it's just mm -hmm. seeing how do you feel do you feel energized do you feel sluggish um, do you have brain fog or do you feel super clear now what i'm saying is like a simple starting point there's other ways to go about this um so you have to have that awareness right you have to feel, yes. feel okay do i feel it because like i know when i've eaten wrongly i feel like very happy i feel like wow tired i feel like i need to go to, to sleep and to rest yes yeah and i remember for me it's always good when i eat like a vegan or even raw raw is also something where i don't lose energy and have the impression afterwards uh-huh right maybe it could be yeah. yeah for some people raw is good for some people that um what if their digestion's not so good mm -hmm. raw can actually be kind of hard to digest mm -hmm. because you need more digestive fire mm -hmm. and also if you're in a cold location mm -hmm. raw is probably not so good um, and certain foods, so the one of the big benefits of raw is you get all the enzymes which help digest mm -hmm. it and you also get like the natural life force. Mm -hmm. And there's other things that affect mm -hmm. the life force, I won't go into that now. Um, so, but certain foods that are maybe hard to digest, yeah. like let's yeah. say carrots might be hard for you to digest. Well, they have more life force raw, but the energy it takes for you to digest them. What is life force when it comes to, to vegetables? Yeah, life, life force. force. How do you measure life force? Why is a carrot having me? Does a carrot have more life force than a potato? Depends on the carrot and the potato. It's like a life by life. Life force, I basically mean energy okay. or like chi or prana mm -hmm. are different words for it. Mm -hmm. And so just like different people have different mm. amounts of and it's individualistic so, so you can measure also each vegetable you can categorize it so this is having in general a good high wipe and another one not so much well, I can not, so not, it's it's not, not so simple it's not so simple. simple but I mean it is simple but that's yeah. not the way to okay. approach it okay. the way to approach it is based so there's a lot of factors that play into the energy or life mm -hmm. force of a food mm -hmm. okay so how it's grown does the soil have good nutrients? Because that's where it's taking yeah. its nutrients. Yeah. So yeah. you can, that's pretty simple. Is it getting nice air? Is mm -hmm. it getting nice sun? Is it getting good water? Mm -hmm. Just like us, like if we're getting mm -hmm. the good nutrients, we have fresh air, we have clean water, we're gonna have more energy and feel better. Um, and then there's the process, like how long ago was it picked? Was it picked mm -hmm. 10 days ago? Or did you just pick mm -hmm. it and eat it fresh? It's gonna majorly change the life force. Beautiful examples, I have to say, because yeah. That brings me to eating a tomato. A tomato can be like just taste after water, more or less. Uh -huh. yeah? And sometimes you have a tomato that is full of taste. Yes. And full of, you would maybe then say high energy yeah. uh, level, right? Yeah, and I think okay. there's a correlation between taste and energy. Mm. Also, like more high energetic foods mm. taste more there's more flavor they're stronger they're like you feel them you're like oh you can yeah. feel it i can yeah. feel like when i yeah. when i speak now about the tomato that tastes very yeah. good i think oh yeah. and at the end you are what you're eating right so when you take like those high wipe vegetables and fruits to you yes you get that energy incorporated into your system so you might feel afterwards the same as 
the fruit or the vegetable before. Yeah, because it's you're taking that in. Now, there's one other element that I think it ties back to like knowing which foods are good for you. Mm -hmm. So just because like you read about a food and it's a superfood mm -hmm. and you're thinking, oh, it says it's good for this, mm -hmm. this, this, and this, it doesn't mean that it's going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. Not every food that's yeah. good is good for every mm -hmm. person. So it's it's a finding the right match. And it's kind of, I like, an easy way to understand it is like people, right? Mm -hmm. So you find a person, let's say you're looking for a partner, that's got a lot of their like high energy and they feel really good, right? Mm -hmm. And they're probably eating healthy. They match your mm -hmm. energy. Yeah, it's so good idea. you, there could be a really awesome, healthy person that's amazing that's like, you're like, ugh, it's just not a match. They're still an amazing person. It just doesn't match mm -hmm. what you're needing. So it's just mm. the the skill is to gain awareness in like how do I feel when I eat this? And how do I react to what I've eaten then afterwards? Yes. And how does your body that? react? Yeah. Mm. And I hope I'm not getting too complicated. There's yeah. one other element to mm -hmm. consider in this and that is our mental state mm -hmm. and our past um experiences with that food so for example mushrooms i like mushrooms because i didn't when i was a kid i didn't like mushrooms me neither okay i come from yeah. bavaria okay. and we had a lot of mushrooms there and i yeah. didn't like them not at all and now i enjoy the beauty of a mushroom yeah because there are so many different varieties out there yes. and you can do so many things to exactly mm -hmm. and so most foods are like that there's actually a ton of different varieties mm -hmm. they're grown in a ton of different ways and they're also cooked in a different way like i don't really like watery soggy mushrooms mm -hmm. i like like golden crisp mm -hmm. delicious yeah. you know that's delicious to me and there's also like a ton of amazing kinds of yeah. mushrooms that all taste different but as a kid i had mushrooms that were kind of watery soggy mm -hmm. and there were the button mushrooms that are like the most common ones and i was like Ugh, i don't like these mm -hmm. I still don't really love those mm -hmm. cooked that way, but I love mushrooms, all these other really amazing ones. Mm -hmm. So it's the more we can start to open our mind to different possibilities mm -hmm. and there's different ways to relate to the ingredients and different varieties. We can find all these amazing things that we're like, oh my God, I love how this tastes and it feels great in my body. Because most people are like, their perspective of what they can eat is very limited to like maybe what they find in the grocery store well there's a ton more amazing mm -hmm. food available beyond that mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of like going on some adventures and mm -hmm. getting kind of in, into this playful oh. state of like i want to try something new and meeting a new person and be like where did you get that yeah. and, i mean one yeah. has to say also that the markets here in bali are amazing right they are so colorful like um, the dragon fruit, we have one out of the table here, I was just eating while you were coming. Yeah. It's deep purple and it's so yummy to have it on the tongue. They are so, of course, here to go on a discovery journey is amazing, but I think you can even do it back home. Like I'm astonished when I'm on my local market in the southern part of Bavaria, uh, what kind of fruits and vegetables I can find because I think there was also a shift at least in Germany like mm -hmm. you value like old vegetables and old fruits again and you suddenly see them something that has been eaten like a long time ago already and now it's yeah. up on there again right totally and the, that's that's exactly spot yeah. on is our ancestors were eating generally yeah. higher quality foods they had less options, but they're eating locally, and... Why is locally, is locally necessarily high quality? Locally is not necessary. It could be local that's grown with a bunch yeah. of pesticides yeah. and a monocrop with bad yeah. soil. So, but, or and, the best ingredients you're going to find in Bali mm -hmm. are local ingredients mm -hmm. that are grown or raised in a very conscious way. Because let's take an apple, for example. If I want to buy an apple here in Bali that's from the United States, generally they have to pick it before it's ripe mm -hmm. or it's going to rot when it gets here. Plus, they put it on a plane. We talked about the energy and the vibration. Okay, so it's like got fluorescent lights mm -hmm. on it. It's mm -hmm. packed and, mm -hmm. it, and it's also picked a long time. So it's not picked in its optimal state mm -hmm. and it's also picked a long time before you eat it, mm -hmm. both which cause a decrease in life force mm -hmm. or energy. Good point. Yeah. Very good point. I would like to come back of um, what I, we have just discussed before, if I may. Yes. Like you said, like okay, 
healthy food it's individual for each person mm -hmm. now i have this idea in mind that maybe some people don't know what is healthy for me so your answer would be like listen to yourself be aware of how it feels after you've eaten and we mentioned some criteria like being tired after or feel very happy yeah yes um to what extent can you support that process then externally let's go back to will smith huh? because we have okay. mentioned him before yeah we, did he, yeah we go back did he did he know from the beginning what food is good for him like when you started to work for him yeah did he give you a list and say even look this is the thing i really like it's good for me i know go and do only this how was it like he had to figure out and have to also observe and watch him how he's eating how he's feeling after mm -hmm. so you could find your connection with him of what mm -hmm. is good for him so how much did you put yourself in and give him also kind of advice or some ideas like yes. try this maybe it's good for you and it was yeah so this um this was earlier on yeah. in my career so it was before i had really like developed all of these yeah. skill sets it was i was developing mm. them um so they did give me a list of like things he liked things he didn't like and was it after the criteria of health consciousness health aspects or was that at that time playing not yet such a big role i think it was a mix and mm. also like when he was preparing for a movie so if he needed his body in a certain way for a movie, the mm -hmm. diet would shift for that. Ah, and he knew about it. He yes. knew about the correlation between yeah. what you were eating, you are afterwards. So he knew about it. He was yes. asking explicitly for some more stimulating meals, for example. Yes, mm -hmm. at times. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have really like a direct communication mm -hmm. of like, how did that meal feel? That mm -hmm. kind of communication. But I was bringing in a lot of new ingredients and ideas. And I'd be like, try this thing. Like, and um, I think that's partly why they really liked me, because I was bringing all this amazing mm -hmm. things. Can you give us an example that you can share? Like, what was an idea where you say, like, where you said, like, oh, it came to my mind and it really helped the other one to, to, to feel upgraded afterwards? Was it like the way you were cooking, or was it more like, more local ingredients or a totally new ingredient that was different difficult to get but you found it you're talking about an example with yes. will smith yeah whatever um yeah a few things came to mind one is um so they ate a lot of chicken that was like a big part of their diet um so no vegetarian not vegetarian and for some people vegetarian is great for some people yeah. the meat helps them and it, it depends on the person yeah a lot free of free will free decision yeah. so um bone broth i don't know if you know much about bone broth but bone broth is very mineral rich. It's very good for healing the gut, actually. Mm -hmm. And for people that eat meat, I would say it's kind of a top superfood. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I started doing is I would make my own bone broth. And instead of putting like water and rice or beans, I would use the bone broth for all that. Mm -hmm. And in that bone broth, I'd also put other medicinal mm -hmm. plants in that, basically. So it's like this medicinal broth that goes in all of their food. So they didn't really know that was happening it was just i was just doing it <laughs> i mean they were loving the food and it was appreciated at the end yes but yeah. they didn't know like the detail i was going into but i was very into yeah. it um, another shift i would say was like um i was using like raw dairy also so this is not vegan another non-vegan thing i did do some vegan stuff for them too the mother-in-law will smith's mother-in-law which is jada's mom mm -hmm. She was really into uh, raw vegan food at times. So mm -hmm. I'd make like all raw vegan for her. Um, but this is a cool one for people that do eat dairy. So I was getting really amazing um, all grass fed. So mm -hmm. grass is super high in minerals and nutrients. So if they have that food, the milk gets that. And um, raw, it was also raw unpasteurized. So when you pasteurize dairy, it kills the enzymes and makes it harder to digest. So I was getting that, like really amazing raw honeys, and I was making these raw desserts mm. with mm. cream and honey. Mm. And so they're like this, yeah, <laughs> really <laughs> delicious desserts that just by switching, not the name of the ingredient, mm. but the source and the process of the ingredient, mm. become way healthier mm. than if I had bought in like your store-bought whipping mm. cream that's the cows aren't given good food, mm -hmm. it's pasteurized, there's probably antibiotics, mm -hmm. honey that's not even honey, it probably has sugar in it. So like, I could make the same mm -hmm. dessert and have it be really not healthy, or get the really good ingredients and it tastes way better mm -hmm. and healthier, more energy. That reminds yeah. me a bit of my most favorite restaurant in Munich, because uh -huh. there I learned something, they make cake, 
Okay. But they don't use sugar or any classical ingredients. They use, for example, avocado uh -huh. in a cake. Isn't this just like fantastic? Or honey instead yes. of sugar. Yeah. And I know the way they are cooking, they don't even use like normal water, but high level or high wipe mineral water. Nice. And I think you can feel the difference. And one criteria for me at least that is showing me that it is a good food when I eat it late because sometimes I work a lot and there is no time to eat before eight because I like the drool. Yes. Or even to not eat dinner, honestly, but sometimes I have to eat and it's 10 uh, in the evening. And then when there is something that is um, so light that you can sleep afterwards, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You don't feel it. It's not like digesting now hours after. Yes. This is for me a criteria where I say like, this was really um, well done. You well, found that helps you a lot. Yeah, helps That's me. awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. I yeah. um, remember, I think when we were introduced by each other, I said, oh, you teach people how to communicate with food and to get back to the love of food and to love food, actually. Can you teach me? And then he said <laughs> to you, my friend and me, I would take your spoon and look what you were having on the spoon, take it with awareness, look at it, appreciate it, breathe in and out, and then slowly put it into your mouth. And we look at to your friend's eyes actually which was a challenge because we were looking into each other and you're doing this thing which felt like a bit at the beginning as oh, is this a theater now but then when we had it on our tongue or i can just speak um, of myself it felt so beautiful because i can't remember when i had eaten something with so much time and awareness mm -hmm. it was on the tongue and he said just chew it yeah but don't swallow it uh, just yes. chew it. And I thought, okay, and I start. And then you said something. <laughs> make that sound. Do you know which sound? Do you want to make it? Mm. <laughs> yes, the sound. That's right. And we were in a restaurant, and I thought, oh Jesus, everybody's looking at us. <laughs> but I was, I was watching my friend, and she was looking into my eyes, and it felt so good. There was a connection. It was mm -hmm. a connection that was building up in my mouth. And I think, but again, maybe it's storytelling. But I think I could feel that the taste was opening up. Uh -huh. Maybe it was because it was concentrating on what is going on in my mouth, but it was a beautiful experience. Yes. Right? Yeah. So is this one way how you teach people to, you, you mentioned that at that night, to communicate with food. It was the first time I ever heard that expression. Yeah. Um, it's interesting as you're saying this, because I'm thinking like the, Mm, is like talking yeah. to the food maybe is what you're thinking mm, yeah. um the that's a way i teach people yeah to become more present so the more present we are with something the more in communication we get mm. even if we're not talking we can read each other and be connected um so it helps become more present mm -hmm. and notice all the beauty in it basically yeah and so yeah, that's too. really how that helps yeah Tell me the question again. I feel like I lost my how, train of thought. Oh, good. I mean, it was a long mm. intro. Um, so how, maybe you might ask yourself as a listener here, um, how can I communicate with food? Mm. So, I mean, I, I gave my example, but do you have other hints, other tools, what one can do, like sitting the next time over, you might be having your breakfast soon or even dinner. So what to do to start communicating what you're consuming? Yes, totally. Um, this is something I really love doing. So the, the easiest way to start is to start with one ingredient. Because when you have a whole dish, it's a whole mixture, right? So if you start with one, um, I have some processes I run people through to get more connected. Um, but you can look at the food, you can basically get into your senses, your five senses, and notice your experience with each one. Mm. So how does it look? Okay, how does it smell? How does it taste? How does it sound? Now How does it sound? Yes. Hmm? And that might be... How is a tomato sounding? Yeah, and it might, you might have to do something to make a sound. Or you might ask, is there something this tomato wants to communicate to me? That gets a little more on the esoteric kind of spiritual yeah. level. It sounds a bit crazy. Yeah. So, talking to a tomato. Yeah, okay, so... If, what do you say to your tomato? <laughs> <laughs> So I kind of see it as I'm speaking to the spirit of the plant, yeah. not just the, the tomato is part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something indigenous cultures 
have been doing for a very long time. It's, it's normal to them. So that's, you're right, it sounds crazy to most people. Ah, um, but maybe because I can add, because you said that before you were trained by... Yes, by, um, I'm trained in a tradition from a Native American tribe, it's the Mi'kmaq yeah. tribe, yeah. And so they taught you how to do cele ceremonies at the end, yes. and part of the local old ceremonies um, is of course the way of, of, of offerings and as well of, yes. of, of eating, of consuming them, right? Yeah, um, that is part right. of it. I mean, that is definitely part of it. Yeah. But the teachings that I received were more about um, communication and exchange. So, like, if we're but in relation to foot, no, right? Foot played a role, but it was not the key focus, or was it the key focus? It was not the key focus, but that but same. You it. It's the same. The technique. same because with food, what are we dealing with? Mm -hmm. We're dealing with plants and we're mm -hmm. dealing with elements. As when we're cooking, we're dealing with like fire, wind, water. We're dealing with all the elements, right? And we're dealing with plants and animals. Mm -hmm. Well, in ceremony, it's, we're yeah. doing, it's yeah. the same yeah. things. Yeah. And so when we go to pick a plant to mm -hmm. build something to use for a ceremony, we make an offering to it. Just like if I was going to ask you for something, like a mm -hmm. session or your service, I would pay you. Mm -hmm. I make an offering. Um, and we also ask permission, like, hey, can, would you like to help us with mm -hmm. this? So, the, it, how do I put it? The way to learn how to do it is just to start trying and be open to the possibility mm -hmm. that it could be real. I so like what you're saying, and I yeah. have to go back because just two minutes ago I said how to talk to a tomato. And then you brought up this kind of idea to do a ceremony mm -hmm. because here in Bali you do a lot of ceremonies. You cannot escape, yeah. And from the locals, <laughs> but it's beautiful. And I think yeah. this is why the island is so fantastic. Yeah, it keeps a certain vibe. It's also like high vibe energy through that. And um, whenever you go to a cacao ceremony here or whatever ceremonies there are around, there are many various ceremonies. Um, of course, when I go out and I get to a tree or I take um, a leaf. I was taught the same by locals here, ask for permission and explain where you would like to cut that leaf right now and take uh -huh. it with you, right? Yes. And I ought to also have a habit, like I personally don't like cutted plants in my home. Uh -huh. Because for me it's a symbol of death, because you take it and it's just there to blossom a couple of more days, but you can observe how it's going to die. Correct. So I prefer to not have cutted flowers. Uh -huh. as a present because sometimes you do it you invite it and you get flowers mm -hmm. or rather a plant in a how do you say in a with mm -hmm. a torf in it yes. yeah or just leave it out yes. and so now it's really weird how perception is because of course i can talk to a tomato then as well but i just never thought about to talk to the foot that is in front of me isn't this weird yeah despite all the two mentioned experiences yeah i haven't had the bridge to talk to my proper foot yes and there's a Thank cool, you so much. you're welcome. <laughs> there's another, as you were saying that, there's actually a few more teachings in yeah. that. So like you were saying, instead of cut flowers, yeah. you'd rather have a flower in a pot. Yeah. Same with our food. If we can grow our own food, mm. we have the plant right there. And it helps to build that relationship from the plant because mm -hmm. then you're caring for it and you're loving it. And then that goes into it, and then it gives you a gift, and you eat it. This is a lovely idea. Yes. I ha yeah. It's really lovely. Yeah. So. Um, Very inspiring. I like that approach. Yeah. To build up a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. And that's really um, through those relationships that plants mm -hmm. can help us more, and we can help them. And essentially, it comes down to like our exchange mm -hmm. with the Earth, Mother Earth, and how do we relate to Mother Earth? And what is our exchange? How are we taking care of it? And I think a lot of people are aware that mm -hmm. our exchange with Mother Earth is very out of balance. Mm -hmm. As we can see, like deforestation, mm -hmm. the waters are polluted, the air is polluted. So I like to use food as a portal to mm -hmm. seeing like how, how can we get in a better exchange in that relationship yeah. and really be uh, caretakers of ourselves, our community and the earth and create more like positive energy, abundance, mm -hmm. good vibration. Yeah. Oh, this talk helps me so much because like <laughs> for me eating became um, 
like and you have asked before when it started like when i started to work in m a there was not so much time and um breaks were were not common and i used to start very to eat very quickly mm -hmm. and i think i still have that habit until today and i recognize that um at the end it's not about appreciating what is in front of you mm. right i sometimes when i i get into the stress mode and i'm just eating uh -huh. despite i i try to of course get to good stuff i'm eating but so this leads me to the next question um to eat how much time would you put for breakfast for lunch and for dinner is it you say like you make a little ceremony so breakfast should be 30 minutes or mm. uh, you have to have dinner and take an hour and don't watch television don't read a book do it in silence what is your recommendation to do a proper meal yeah and those are good ideas and i think it comes down to the individual person mm -hmm. you don't want it to be like not fun where you're like okay <laughs> now i have to, I have for to there's hour. a rule yeah. you said i have to do it yeah i more like to help people um mm -hmm. observe the consequences mm -hmm. and see new options mm -hmm. so like a simple thing you could do is just be like before i start eating i'm going to take three breaths and look at my food mm, you know? great like just idea. simple great idea. start simple and if you're noticing like man, I really am rushing. You could try setting an hour to eat a meal and notice, hmm, did I like mm -hmm. that? How do I feel afterwards? And instead of it being like you have to do, you switch it to I want to do because mm -hmm. you see the positive mm -hmm. impact on it. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. So at home, I would say, um, yeah, definitely the three breaths is really good. Um, having a meal with friends and family and taking time to connect um some form of like a prayer but it could be anything you make up it's just like a little ritual to connect so if you're a specific so appreciate what you yeah if there, you're right? a specific religion it can be related to that if you're not it can just be a fun thing that you do with your family yeah. to connect and appreciate the food mm -hmm. that's really what it's Good. about yeah um you can try chewing your food more Gandhi says something um, that I, that always stuck with me. It's a drink your food and chew your water. Drink your food and chew your water. Which means chew your food mm. enough that it's a liquid, basically. I mean, which is maybe extreme for some people, but it, it always mm. I always kind of like, huh, that's an interesting yeah, concept. I also have a delta of improvement to yeah. chew more and longer, right? Yes. So even you know a lot. Where does it all come yeah. from? Where does this passion for food, for cooking, for helping others to become a food lover? Yeah. Where is this all coming from? Have you been into food passion since you can remember? And if so, why? Have you yeah. been raised up by parents who were very like conscious in that regard? Or mm. they were even chefs themselves? How does it come that you are there where you are? Yeah, I feel like it's part of what I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. I, and it started when I was very young. Mm -hmm. I was joking earlier with you about the mother's milk, but I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> we had fun before that, that's true. <laughs> um, but, I, but at a very young age, yeah. I loved eating. Like, it was just very pleasurable. I remember actually, um, I'd have food I really liked yeah. to eat a lot, and I would intentionally chew it for as long as I could because I wanted to get the flavor. I didn't want it to mm. end because I was like, okay, I only have like 10 bites of this thing. So I'm going to like, I would eat it very slow so I could get more of the flavor. Mm. And this is as a kid. Um, and then I started like just wanting to create food I liked. I'd be like, wow, I love that. And I wanted to learn how to do it so I could have it and share it with others. And then um, my parents were both, um, they both studied horticulture, which is a study of plants. My mm -hmm. dad's an arborist, my mom's a landscape architect, and they both love growing food. Mm -hmm. They love plants, they're very connected to plants and animals too. So I grew up with like chickens. So we had chicken eggs, veggie gardens, um, really awesome fruit trees, all different kinds, really amazing herbs. And so those plants are like my friends. I would like climb in the trees and there's certain herbs that like I use, um, how do I put it? It's like, a, I can feel the like energy. Of they, my relationship with them brings a very like powerful energy when I cook so I might just put a little bit of this specific herb but it energizes the whole dish and they're um 
they're healing plants, they help people. And when people eat the food I cook on retreats, and especially when I'm connected to those plants, mm -hmm. they notice something about it special. They don't know what it is, but they're like, oh my God, this is amazing, I feel great. And, in, and that's what it is, yeah. Have you been then also into a permaculture? Because permaculture, I got in touch when I was in Lombok. It's uh -huh. a beautiful way of, of what you said, what we said at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. It's out of circle. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to create, like, um, to plant, like, high white vegetables, yeah? And yes. fruits. It's fantastic, mm -hmm. that system. Yes. Yeah, what you can harvest after. So, have your family been into that as well? Are you into that? Or would you like to see it implemented more often? I mean, you can see it at certain farms already. Yes. And it requires a bit of effort at the beginning to have them a big harvest after. Sure. And you have the good uh, big industries that are maybe not totally in favor of that yet. Mm -hmm. So how do you view the, the permaculture right now? Uh, I love permaculture. Uh, yeah, permaculture uh, is amazing. My parents no surprise, I would say, yeah. implemented a yeah, lot of the practices. Did, yeah. yeah, I have a project here in Uluwatu that's a community. Uluwatu is south of Bali. Yeah, mm -hmm. community food forest project. So food <laughs> forest is mimicking the growth patterns of a forest. Beautiful. But food basically. So you're layering different trees. Mm -hmm. I won't go too far into it. So permaculture. Um, yeah, I think it's a really awesome system. I feel like for large scale production, mm -hmm. it's a little bit tricky. It works better for like groups of people mm -hmm. that are living off yeah. the land, which I yeah. really love. I've lived um, in a couple different permaculture farms before, and so yeah, I have I have a good connection with that. Yeah. <laughs> Last three questions, if I may. Even. Sure. Um, before you ask them, can I share one more thing? Of course. I thought of this a while ago. Um, this is when we were talking about different ways to help yourself get more connected yeah, to what yeah. to eat, like what's going to be good for your body. And so I shared a lot of tips on how to connect with the food and know if it's good for you. There's a couple basic guidelines that can help anyone in choosing high quality food. Um, the number one is the closer to nature, so how it would naturally be in nature, generally is going to be the healthier mm. food. Such so, a simple rule. Yeah. If you think about it, it must be true because it's so obvious. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you just forget about it as, yes, Coco, you can speak to tomatoes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that, um, it basically, the furthest connected nature would be yeah. wild foods. Yeah, sure. Wild foods are generally like really high in nutrients, have a lot of life force. And then we might have farm foods like a biodynamic or like permaculture mm -hmm. style, different mm -hmm. um, techniques of farming that really use the natural systems of nature and then going to the other spectrum is like a genetically modified so that's very far from how the food would be in nature mm. um, adding uh, pesticides and chemical fertilizer so it's putting chemicals in the food so it's going further mm -hmm. and then it goes even further to like creating artificial foods um, highly processed foods so all of those things are taking it away from nature and Pretty much as a rule of thumb, those foods are not as good for us. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's kind of a simple way to go, oh cool, let me try this food that's mm -hmm. close to nature and see how it feels for my body. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> so the three questions. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice that I also get oh, yeah, that I'm microphone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so my three questions for you even, yeah. I start with the first one, like mm, you as a specialist for food and food love, mm -hmm. what is for you the perfect meal, the perfect dish and what is the perfect surrounding for that, like uh -huh. the setting and for you personally, is it like having music played live or from a disc? Um, and do you prefer to have it on your own or with someone? It's just one yeah. question. Okay. Two more coming. All right, cool. Well, uh, so how I is a perfect dish yeah. meal looking for you like? Yeah, so as you said that, I was getting this cool vision in my head. And it was kind of like the um, Garden of Eden. Oh, so I'm like, in nature. this is fancy. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and there's just like amazing Can food. Can we toy? Yes. <laughs> so there's amazing food growing ah. everywhere. And the whole meal is cooked like in an outdoor kitchen ah. with like fires, all natural kind of techniques. And then. Um, yeah, like there's a beautiful circle of friends, music, candlelight, some really pretty music, a fire, and um, yeah, we're just laughing and enjoying mm -hmm. and loving life, eating delicious food. Oh, yeah. 
I see myself so in there. Sounds good, huh? <laughs> Sounds very good. <laughs> the second question I would have for you even is like, um, kids are the future, right? It's the next generation. Mm -hmm. um, what would be the most important thing for you where you feel like a call to teach the next generation when it comes to food? Uh -huh. It's really, um, I don't know if teaching them is the right word for me. I feel like the kids actually have a lot to teach us. Mm. So that's why I was like, how do I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like think a lot much. of it is about listening to the kids and what they have to teach us, but also creating the right environments mm. for them. And for me, as far as food goes, it's getting them involved in the process. Okay, let's say... I totally agree what you say. Yeah. Let's say maybe like, how would you inspire them? What kind yeah, of, yeah. I think it's what you, what you yeah. said, like what kind of conditions would you put around the kids so yeah. that they can maybe develop their own exactly already existing skill for their... Yeah, and their own relationships yes, to the yeah, process. Exactly. So um, yeah, just getting them involved in the food mm -hmm. process. So in nature, like my nephew, for example, helps garden. He goes out and like picks produce. Some people live in a city and you don't have that. But you could take your kids to like a farmer's market or take them on a trip to a farm so they get to actually see the process and connect to it. Generally, it's pretty fun for kids. You get to like hike around, play in the dirt a bit. Um, you get to it's eat cool. something. It's, fun. it's adventurous. Yeah. And kids generally really love that. Yeah. And then also with cooking and like um, getting kids to love food, I feel like if they're involved in the process, they like it way more. Like my nephew, when he helps cook, he really wants to eat it and he loves it. Where it's like if I cooked it, maybe he'd be like, uh. So it's it's creating a space where they yeah. get to be connected to and involved yeah. in that process. Them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also like giving them some um, teaching, but also freedom. And this is something that I recently thought was a perfect thing for this question. A lot of adults tell kids, don't play with your food. That's what a master chef does. They play with food all the time. So I think encouraging kids to play with food, encouraging them to play with the dirt, get in the soil, the plants, and um, yeah, mm -hmm. let them let them be in their natural state of uh, to connection and joy. To approach playfulness point. Yeah, it's yeah. fun and it's adventurous, and that's really with um, with adults. I try yeah. and get them in that, like, hmm, let's go on an adventure with this taste and see. Mm -hmm. If you don't like a food, what is it exactly you don't like? And get to know it. Oftentimes, people do end up liking it. Um, or let's go on an adventure to find a new ingredient. And like, it's getting to share and explore all these gifts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Kids love that. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> the last question is yes. going to be a challenging one. I think so. Okay. I mean, we have a very strong food industry, right? And the food mm -hmm. industry is also putting uh, some very huge pillars of what people are eating and consuming mm -hmm. and I'm really astonished because sometimes it's just cheaper to eat bullshit food mm -hmm. than the good stuff that is just growing actually next door like the local stuff so what would you say what would be your vision of a really great and good and convincing and fair and all that we want like food industry how how should that look like in the future for you Big question. For I'm gonna take end. a breath. I'm taking a breath. I'm gonna <laughs> <do this. laughs> I learned it helps also when you're eating. Yeah, well, it's sort of like the dinner, mm -hmm. the the Garden of Eden image. Mm -hmm. So I have a dream of uh, growing food forests, mm -hmm. and really like most of the ornamental plants like in our yards and things we put energy into mm -hmm. growing these ornamental plants they could be edible plants so mm -hmm. in a way we can be growing food in our yards we can be growing food on a larger scale but working with and mimicking how nature mm -hmm. works so as humans we have the ability to destroy and create mm -hmm. and those two forces are quite strong in us so if we understand the cycles of nature, mm -hmm. we can actually grow food in a way that works with nature mm -hmm. and, and creates more abundance, mm -hmm. more life, more energy. Mm -hmm. Our current system is working against or trying to work over mm -hmm. nature 
and it's creating less life, like it's killing the soil, the water, the food, the people. So, is that a clear answer? Yeah. It's a vision. Yeah, it's my vision. Of, yeah. yeah, and um, and I see how it's possible also, um, but I think it's it's small steps, and I think more and more people are becoming aware of the importance yeah, yeah, of connecting yeah. to our food, and like things like the community garden I helped create gives people a space to come and get a taste of that and and it's pretty amazing because people show up and yeah sometimes they're not in the best state you know or they're just doing okay they're like oh, i'm all right and we work for an hour and a half and at the end everyone's like happy and laughing and like so much joy and it's really just like the earth is working with them and just being in that relationship is one of our most natural relationships as a human being. And so it just brings joy. Yeah. It just brings <laughs> joy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we are all looking now yeah. forward for our net next dish and meal. Yeah. And I think we will all consume it now mm. differently with mm. more awareness. Mm -hmm. And again, also with more joy and with more fun and yeah. with just a different angle. Yes. Even I learned a lot. Yeah. Thank you so much You're welcome. for being here on my show yes. and for sharing your great knowledge. Uh -huh. I do thank you, dear listeners, and um, you will find all the information about even in our show notes. How can we find you on Instagram? It's Freestyle Kitchen. Freestyle Kitchen. Yeah. And I think you also have a beautiful homepage. I think it's Martin. Yes, there's Instagram a link account. on the Instagram to that. Get connected yeah. to him. And mm. I do say, it was a big pleasure. Thank you again so much for having spent time with us. Mm. I will be soon with you on another journey for the UN Project, your broadcast for inspiring stories. Now there's so much in my mind. Right. <laughs> I, I want to comment on that. Okay, I, I want to continue my dragon food who's still right. out on the table there. So I do wish you a beautiful rest of the day. Mm. Keep on shining and see you soon. Yours, okay. Karina Rosa. You. Okay, I'm going to say a P.S. Yes, of and course. P.S. Um, it was a lot of information. And so if you're feeling overwhelmed by the amount of information, I invite you to take like one concept and just see if you can apply one thing. And what you said at the end is like more adventure, joy, fun. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good way to start. Mm -hmm. Just think how you can have more adventure, more joy, and more fun with your food. Yeah. Yeah. I will incorporate that. Yeah. Awesome. With my trading food right now. Okay. Thank you again so much. <laughs> See you.